A wind farm like this starts off looking something like this. It's hoped that these dry, dusty fields will, within the next few years, be the site of Ghana's first wind power plant. The wind turbines, um, which will be about 50, um, will generate approximately 460 gigawatt hours of clean electricity um, every year. Now, based on demand forecasts in Ghana uh, of about 17,000 gigawatt hours in 2017, that's at least 3% of Ghana's need. Now, on a household level, um, we're able to supply uh, a near to 256,000 households here in Ghana. Ghana signed in a Renewable Energy Act in 2011. It committed to getting 10% of its energy mix from renewable sources like wind power. But although there's interest in renewable projects, they've been slow to materialise. Given that there's a current financial crisis and electricity crisis in the recent past, has more or less um, created a, an investment environment which doesn't make banking power projects in Ghana uh, very easy. Environmental groups want to see more physical evidence of Ghana's environmental plans and quickly. With signs of climate change already evident in Ghana, they say time is running out. We have uh, the manifestation of climate change in uh, drought, in especially the northern part of Ghana, which is affecting agriculture. Now, another aspect of climate change is sea rise. You have uh, the, the shoreline being breached and the sea actually extending so many meters into homes, destroying livelihoods and taking away all that people have fought for. At the Paris Climate Change Talks, leaders from across the globe pledged to do more to tackle climate change. That meant investing more in renewable energies like wind and solar power rather than fossil fuels. But a year on and on the ground, nothing's really changed. Um, at the local level, we're still seeing a lot of investment from multilateral agencies and development finance institutions into fossil fuel. So you have to ask the question if the countries who sign up to agreements like the Paris uh, Agreement are actually looking at where they're donating money into the multilateral agencies and into their own development finance institutions and where that money is going. Um, because there is a lot of fossil fuel um, development in emerging markets like Ghana um, and that then we'll see a priority of fossil fuel development at local level. Ghana's energy crisis last year saw regular 24-hour power cuts nationwide. In the run-up to this year's presidential election, the government's pledged to make power in Ghana more reliable. But for now, there doesn't seem to be the funds to make it greener too. Katerina Vitozzi, CCTV, Accra, Ghana.